What's going on everybody? It's Jack and welcome back to another recipe video. I've got two one pot pasta dishes for you guys today. The first one is gonna be what I'm calling a cheeseburger pasta. As you can see here, we have some lean ground beef. This is 96.4. You could go a little bit fatter on the actual ground beef, but it just raised the calories a little bit. So I went with a lean 96.4. You can even go like 90, 8-2, you can go leaner if you want, but I think 96-4 is a good middle ground. We also have some pasta, you can use any pasta you want. I'm using the rigatoni right here, a little bit thicker noodle. We also have some cheese. This is the sharp cheddar reduced fat as well. And we have a one third less fat Philadelphia cream cheese. This is just the Kroger version, um, but yeah. It's a little bit cheaper, not a big deal there. Otherwise, we have our onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper to taste. Real quick, I'm gonna read the amounts of each ingredient. So we have one pound of our ground beef. We have 16 ounces or 454 grams of dry pasta. We have eight ounces of our shark cheddar, which is 226 grams. We have eight ounces of our reduced fat cream cheese, which is also 226 grams. And then we're using half a teaspoon of our onion and garlic powders, and then salt and pepper to taste. A combination of on the actual meat as well as in the pot itself. So first thing we need to do is go ahead, cook your pasta to wherever the instructions are on the box. For this rigatoni, it's boil some water, add some salt, and then cook for about 12 minutes. So I've got some water boiling over there. Then we also need to brown our ground beef. And then essentially what we're gonna do is add our cheese into our cooked ground beef add the seasoning, add the cooked pasta in, and there's our dish, so let's get cooking. Siri, set a 12 minute timer. And of course, when we're cooking anything, efficiency is key. So while the pasta is boiling, what we can go ahead and do is start to cook our meat. So this is a pretty big pan. You probably don't need something quite as big, but I want it to be shallow enough to show you guys what's going on in the pan. So we're gonna put this over a medium heat up front. And now we let that pan get nice and warm, hit it with a little bit of nonstick, and then actually throw our beef in there. When we throw our beef in there, we're gonna let it brown before we start to break it up. But let it brown, get some nice flavor pockets, and we'll kind of break it up as we cook it. But first thing we're gonna do, let that get warm, hit it with some nonstick, and then start cooking our beef. Also, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't forget an ingredient at the beginning. We also need some skim milk. I'll go ahead, I'll make sure to put it in the ingredients list that I put on the screen at the beginning, but it won't actually be on display. So we'll need three quarter cups of skim milk. You can use any milk you want, almond milk, nut milk. Um, you could even use 2% or something a little bit thicker to get creamier, but I think skim milk is a good in between of high protein, but still being real milk. Now our pan is nice and hot, hit it with some nonstick. And then our beef will go in. You wanna hear that sizzle when you drop your meat in or else your pan isn't hot enough. That sizzle's gonna get a nice little char and crisp on the outside, so when we break it up, it has some flavor pockets built in. So we'll go ahead and let that cook. I'm actually gonna go ahead and break it down just a little bit, as far as kinda like press it out, thin it down a little bit, just like that. We'll also throw a little bit of salt and pepper. Just like that. And we'll pretty much keep it together like this and actually try to flip it once and then kind of break it up as we go. The rest of our seasonings will come when we add the cheese. Now that our meat has had time to brown on both sides, we can start to chop it up. Still should be a little pink in the middle. So basically chopping this is gonna make sure everything gets cooked evenly all the way through. Our pasta still is a few minutes, but our ground beef is just about done. So what we're gonna do with the ground beef, we're gonna turn that down to a low simmer as we add in our cheese. So first we're just gonna add our entire block of cream cheese. If I can get it open. Might need a little help scooping it out. Oh no. And we're counting all the macros for the cream cheese, so might as well scrape it all out, right? Oh, that looks pretty good. So our cream cheese there. Then we'll go ahead and do our entire pack, which is our eight ounces of sharp cheddar. And as you guys will notice, I really try to make all my recipes very user friendly in the sense that wherever you buy, you use. So we aren't using like half a box of pasta, three quarter cups of this, a third of that. I try to make all my recipes essentially use all the ingredients or at least most of the ingredients um, that you buy. So you don't have a bunch of leftover cream cheese that like you might have to just throw on bagel or something like that. But um, that's worst case scenario, right? Bagels and cream cheese are fantastic. But we'll go ahead, let this warm up, let this kind of melt together. We're also gonna go ahead and add on our seasoning. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I've done this a lot, so it's probably about like three or four packs for me. Boom. Boom. 
and salt and pepper just to taste. Alrighty. So once again, we're gonna let this warm up, kind of melt, mush together, and then our pasta has 30 seconds left. So that should go off anytime. Go give that one last mix. Once the pasta's done, we'll go ahead and drain that and leave it on the side until we add our milk and get our full beef and cheese creamy mixture that we'll add the pasta to. Our cheese has all started to melt and combine with our ground beef. I think that also comes out to be, I wrote it down, 180 milliliters. The milk is gonna help it turn from just melted cheese on ground beef to more of a sauce. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix this until it's a well-formed sauce rather than just melted cheese. And then we'll go ahead and add our cooked pasta on top. Alrighty, as you guys can see, we have our nice beef and cheese mixture thing sauce going on right now. Honestly, you could probably stop now and just make it as like a dip. But of course, we're making a full meal out of it, adding some pasta, but I have no doubt you could dip some, I mean, chips, carrots, peppers, really anything in there would be absolutely delicious. But now we're gonna go ahead, now we got this creamy cheese sauce and beef, and add our cooked pasta on top. Okay, so you definitely need a big pot because this thing's almost overflowing. I'm glad I chose the bigger pot and not the smaller one. So just FYI, as you're cooking this, make sure you have a big enough pot to hold everything. But now we're just gonna, once again, kind of mix this around, make sure all the pasta gets coated, and then, um, yeah, mix until well combined. All right, listen really closely. Boom, and just like that, about 20 minutes later, we have our completed dish right here, my cheeseburger pasta, whatever you wanna call it. It's a super creamy, cheesy, delicious meal. Um, but I'll go ahead and read up the macros because obviously one of the most important things is what are the macros, right? Everyone wants to know how high protein is and all that good stuff. So for the entire batch, it is 3,500 calories, 376 grams of carbs, 122 grams of fat, and 226 grams of protein. I personally am gonna split this up into six portions. You could easily do eight, you could feed it to your family. Um, you could do five if you're bulking and want more calories. You can split it up however you want, just take those calories and macros I just listed and divide them by however many servings you want. Personally, like I said, I'm gonna go with six servings. And at six servings, it comes to be 581 calories, 62 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat, and 38 grams of protein. A pretty high protein meal right there for about 580 calories and it tastes so good. Like you would not expect this to be high protein whatsoever. There are a few substitutions you could make. You could actually use protein pasta. Um, I have some in here actually. So you could use something like this. Uh, hopefully it zooms in. This is the Barilla Protein Plus Pasta. This is 10 grams of protein a serving. So that's a good way to increase the protein. Also, we use 96 for ground beef. There is leaner, there's also fatter. So if you use a fatter ground beef, you might actually want to drain some of the excess oil and fat before you add in the cheese. You could even find fat-free cheese. I just use reduced fat because I like some of the flavor. But you can find fat-free sharp cheddar or fat-free cream cheese and use that instead. Um, you could also use almond milk instead of skim milk to save a few calories. But I'm gonna go ahead and divide this into six containers and put them in the fridge. I would say they stay good in the fridge for about a week. Anything longer than that, probably try to eat it before then. Um, I do have a lot of people in my family, so hopefully they'll eat this and they'll be gone in a couple days. But that is my cheeseburger pasta, and I'll see you guys at the next meal. Just got back from the gym and now it's time to cook up our second meal of the video. This is gonna be kind of like a, a creamy chicken spinach pasta. Once again, we still have our pasta. There it is. This recipe, once again, you can use any pasta you want. I'm going with the penne, if you wanna use rigatoni, you can use, I mean, bow tie, literally any pasta you want, but I'm going with penne. Then we also have an ingredient list here because I'm gonna forget something. So we're gonna use 16 ounces of our pasta, which is this entire package, which is 454 grams. We have a pound and a half of chicken right here, which is 680 grams. You don't need to use a whole pound and a half. You could use one pound, It'd be plenty of protein, but we're making this extra high protein because that's what I need. Otherwise, we're gonna have spinach. We're gonna do two cups, so 85 grams of spinach. We also are gonna have some Parmesan cheese. This is just the Kroger brand grated Parmesan right there. That zooms in. So this is, we're gonna use 90 grams of this. 
We also need two cups of milk. I'm using almond milk for the low calorie version, but you could use whole milk. You could also use creamer actually if you want to, that'd be a little bit higher calorie. We're using two cups or 480 milliliters. We're gonna also use 15 grams of flour for our creamy texture. We need three cloves of garlic. So we got garlic right here we need to chop up. We also are gonna use 40 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. This is just a very generic brand of sun-dried tomatoes right there. You can use any kind of dried tomatoes you want. Also, we're gonna use some Italian seasoning for our chicken. We also need some olive oil spray. You could use actual olive oil, but I find the spray just helps me save a few calories rather than dumping oil into the pan. I just kind of give some sprays. So, I mean, maybe I still use probably 30 calories worth of olive oil, but not nearly as much as an actual full tablespoon or a teaspoon. Next, we're going to have some salt and pepper for the chicken. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty basic. Um, I know there are quite a bit of ingredients, but some of it's seasoning. The dried tomatoes are completely optional. Um, but outside of that, yeah, let's go ahead and start putting this together. We need to boil some water to cook our pasta. Just use the directions on here. This says about 11 minutes. And then we also need to cook our chicken, but I'll show you guys how we do that. You're gonna need two things on the stove. One, some boiling water, which you guys can see right there. Boom, and that'll be for our pasta. And we also need a second big pot. So this is gonna be not only where we cook the chicken, but also where we combine all the ingredients into the final meal. So use a pretty big pan I'm using. This, I learned my lesson from the recipe I made, cheeseburger pasta the other day, and we need a big pan. This thing is ginormous, so we've got plenty of space in there. But the first thing we need to do, go ahead and cook our chicken. I personally like to butterfly my chicken so it cooks a little bit faster. If you want to use full breast, it'll probably take six to eight minutes a side. If you want to go ahead and butterfly it, I'll probably cut it into maybe like five to six minutes a side. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and crack into this bad boy. These are some giant chicken breasts too. Hope you guys can see that. So when I say butterfly, I mean you're just kind of opening up so we make a cut right down the middle of the breast. You go ahead and open that up a little bit. Now what we need to do is go ahead and hit our pan with a little bit of non-stick. This way you could pour in actual oil, but I think it's save some calories to do a little bit of non-stick instead. Got that down. Now we'll go ahead and use some Italian seasoning. So I like to season the chicken um, on one side. Go ahead and put that side down into the pan and then season it once it's in the pan as well. So we got some Italian seasoning right here. Season that up. Also hit it with some salt and pepper, but I completely have a chicken covered hand. So I'm gonna wash my hand real quick and then throw the salt and pepper on. I guess that's the one downside to having like a, a grinder for salt and pepper. You need two hands to use it. Go ahead and lay one of our breasts down in the pan. You can go ahead and repeat the process for the second breast and go ahead and cook it for probably, like I said, five to six minutes aside. Just make sure it cooks all the way through. If you do want to check with the thermometer, make sure it gets to 165 degrees. And while our pasta is boiling, our chicken's cooking, we'll go ahead and get some of the rest of the ingredients measured out. So like I said, we need 40 grams of our sun-dried tomatoes, as well as our chopped up garlic, because that'll go in the pan um, once the chicken's done, along with the rest of our kind of like sauce. The first thing we're gonna do is measure out our dried tomatoes. Like I said, we need 40 grams here. All right, there we go. Kind of making a mess. And we also need, like I said, we need three cloves of garlic. I don't know why, but I always find it best to kind of crush it, and you can kind of peel away the little bits and pieces and get to your cloves. Oh, puppy wants to come in. So we got three, so we're gonna go ahead, chop this up, I need to flip the chicken real quick, and we're gonna chop this up and get it in the bowl. Also, I want to hear anything about my chopping skills in the comments below. I'm an amateur cook at best. Our chicken's just about done, so what we're going to do, we have our garlic and tomatoes on the side. That's all set. We're also going to go ahead and combine kind of our creamy sauce that we're going to add. So we need the Parmesan cheese, 90 grams. We need two cups of almond milk as well as 15 grams of flour. So we're gonna put that in here and go ahead and whisk that together. Our alarm is going off, so that means our pasta and chicken should both be done. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the pasta off, drain it, let it sit on the side, and take our chicken off and actually chop it up before we add it back in the pan. After we remove our chicken, we're gonna go ahead and put in our dried tomatoes and garlic cloves in there. So you're gonna dump those right into the same bowl. I'm gonna cook that for about two to three minutes before we add in our creamy sauce. Then we'll add our spinach 
and then we'll add our chicken back in as well as our pasta. So this now is gonna be where we create the rest of our dish. I also need to pull the pasta off and we need to drain this real quick. Our dried tomatoes and garlic have been in there for a little while. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna add our spinach. This is two cups measured out. Boom. I like to let the spinach wilt a little bit before we actually add our mixture. So this is the almond milk, Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of flour in there. So what we're gonna do first, let the spinach wilt just a little bit. And then add our Parmesan on top. Now we'll go ahead and add our Parmesan cheese milk flour mixture. Now at this point, you aren't really looking to cook anything. Now you just want everything to warm up. You want the cheese to melt, become kind of like a sauce rather than chunks of cheese or anything. So we're gonna kind of wash this pretty closely. I would say it only really needs maybe like less than a minute to actually kind of melt, combine, all that kind of stuff. But what we can do, mix it around, watch it for a little bit. Don't really leave this, but what we need to do is once it's kind of a creamy texture, we'll turn the heat off, cut up our chicken, and add all that back in. All right, that's looking pretty good to me, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. Mix that up. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in our pasta. Again, about 30 minutes later, just like the cheeseburger pasta, we are done. This looks absolutely delicious. If you hear it, it is pretty creamy. If I do say so myself, it's making some cool sounds. Um, but this comes out to be 3,018 calories for the entire pot. Then it comes out to be 371 grams of carbs, 59 grams of fat, and 304 grams of protein. Then I'm gonna divide this into five servings. So the cheeseburger pasta, I did six. This, I'm gonna do five. At one serving or one fifth of the entire pot, it comes out to be 604 calories, 74 grams of carbs, only 12 grams of fat, and 61 grams of protein. Most of that protein does come from the chicken breast, so if you only use a pound, I would say the protein probably goes down to maybe like 40 to 45 grams rather than the full 60, but you can use a pound, you can use a pound and a half. Shoot, you can even use two pounds if you want. Um, don't let that hold you back, but this looks absolutely delicious. It is still really warm right now, so I'm gonna kinda let it cool off. I actually go ahead and make myself a quick serving. All right, real quick, we got a noodle, because we need to feed Maisie as well. Maisie, come here. Over here, no. Come here. Sit, shake, other one, stay. She in frame? Yeah, ready? Yeah, <laughs> nice job! Let's go, good job! High five! <laughs> what? I think she approves. Alrighty, and here we have our final product, as you guys can see right there. It smells really good. It smells like Parmesan cheese and Italian seasoning. Who could have guessed? But we'll go ahead and give it a quick taste test. Extremely cheesy, if I do say so myself. I think I might have taken another bite of chicken. I think I might have overcooked the chicken. Yeah, I will say, I think I overcooked the chicken a little bit. I will say, with filming, trying to do the pasta, chicken, the garlic, all that kind of stuff all at once. I kind of did leave it on a little bit too long, but not a big deal. Not too overcooked, just a little bit. So if you do that, probably keep it to like four to five minutes aside. If you butterfly your chicken, don't overcook it like I did. Yeah, but I'm gonna dig in. We gotta take Maisie for a walk after this meal. Otherwise, end the video here. Let me know what other recipes you guys want me to try. I have a couple ideas in mind in terms of like recipes, snacks, desserts, all that kind of stuff. If there's something specific you want, leave it down in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.